Uh, hello, and welcome to 5 Minutes of Development. My name is Stephen Gazard. I am the owner of Broken Kings, and we are working on Cast Conflict right now. Uh, our goal is to have it out by Monday. It's now 5 o'clock on Saturday night. So we're working pretty hard, especially considering that Monday night I'm supposed to have testers over to play it. So I've been working hard all weekend. As you can tell, I'm not really... Well, I'm obviously not in my most prime form right now in terms of appearance, but who cares? It's just a video for the internets. Psh. So what we're working on right now is the shop screen. And if you've played the old Castle Conflict, this is where a bunch of people are going to be really happy because people have been asking us to add new units. And this is where we do it. So what basically happens is we've added campaign mode. And at the end of each match, you get what's known as tech points. And the name can and should change. That's what they're called for now. And once you have tech points, this is campaign mode quickly, you can go to the shop screen here which is where I just was when this video started. Uh, you can get these units by purchasing them. So of course I have no tech points right now. Click on one of them. It says, this is what I want, this is what it does, this is why I can't buy it. I don't have enough tech points. So what I want to do next, what I'm hoping to quickly demonstrate, is how I'm going to get a little bit of text underneath this guy, a number up saying how many tech points he costs. Just a quick demo also. This is an upgrade you can purchase for your castle. Again, not enough tech points, but allows to purchase the flying units. And then I need that. No need tower to purchase Zeppelin. So there you go. We have all these different types of units now. Pardon me. Alright, so I'm gonna quickly try and get that text in there. Now, you're looking at my code and it's not in the best shape. This Class for the or this file for the shop players ended up having about four different classes in it, which is more than I usually try and add. But that's uh, how many it has right now, and I'm probably not going to clean it up because I don't see the point. So what I have in here is a method called. Sorry, I just broke a bit. Add page with units with upgrade. And inside this, there is a for loop that basically grabs the button for the unit, and I have, you know, convenience function for that inside my defaults class, which pretty much is just a word for this gets me stuff easily. It's not really default anything; it's for the name, but whatever. Uh, basically, it just adds a button. And what I want to do next is also add a little price to it. So we're already getting the price here, so I just need to add a label, and I don't think this is going to take me long. So inside Coco's 2D, which is the engine we're using, there is a class called Menu Item Atlas Font. And it basically uses a sprite font, and using that sprite font, it displays text to the screen. And you can also make it clickable if you add it to a menu and give it a selector, as is being done right here with a atlas image, which is a class I wrote. Uh, so if you want to use a sprite font, you usually would use atlas font item and you can see here it takes a string, which is fine, but also takes the character map file, the size of the characters, and the starting character every single time you want to create one. And as far as I'm concerned, trying to memorize that is ridiculous. So inside my port of the name defaults class, I've actually created a method called uh, tiny red text with string. And then I can just pass a string in. So I'm going to format a string. use uh, the cost in tech points of this object. So as you can see, I also have a get tech costs for unit using the unit ID in my defaults class. So again, it's kind of a hodgepodge of convenience stuff. So it's stored in this info class, which is basically a struct containing data. So I'm just going to pass that in there. So now I have my font. Now I want to add that font to my button. So img a child font, and I see now that it didn't Let's give it a proper name. Give it a name before. So now I have a font should show up. Now let's just move it down a bit. Maybe 20. Okay, so it builds. Now I've used red. Maybe I want to use white. So let's give it a look and see if this works. All right. 
Alright, so here we are on our map. Click on the shop. Alright, so we have them appearing now, but obviously they're appearing to the left of my image. And I want them to appear in the center. So, what we need to do is actually make this equal to the center of the image. And if you're using Cocos, what you may not know is that most Cocos nodes, I actually think all Cocos nodes, but I haven't used it with all of them, have a variable called content size, which will return the size of their contents, which with a sprite would be the size of the texture. With an atlas sprite would be the size of the image that you're using. And with even with um, menu item atlas fonts, it actually returns the size of it with the text inside of it. So that's really convenient. So right here, I'm just getting the size of my button. And I believe that should work. There might It might not, because I don't know if I actually set up my uh, atlas image to respond to content size properly yet. It does use a atlas sprite internally. So there might be a bit of a problem with that. But let's give it a shot. And again, it's too far down, but I'll fix that after. All right, so it is centered now. So maybe this just needs to be five. So that looks better. Now the only thing is that these are a little bit small, and one of the things we've run into problems with working on the iPhone is real estate. So you can see I click on this guy, and this text is pretty small. And we can probably make an interim middle-sized font between this and this, but we just find that in general it's hard to have a lot of text on the screen and anything else on the screen. So. It's not showing up on these yet though, so I need to get it on those, and that means I'm going to have to move these guys down a bit, or maybe this guy up a bit. But in general, it's starting to look good. Now I'm going to try it with this font instead. Now this is really easy, just change the font. Alright, that's a little bit better. Doesn't really say what it is though, just a number. So I might want to find a way to link it back to this. But I'm gonna look at that next. So that will be the end of this session, and when you see this in game, hopefully it'll look a little bit more complete.